and we have to determine what are the regulatory authorities that we're trying to conform to in order to create our financial statements. With regards to small businesses, if they're basically building their books just to do their tax return, then the people that we're trying to uh, tailor our financials to is the tax code, right? So obviously the tax code is the thing that's gonna help us to determine whether or not we have an appropriate accounting method that we will be using. I say that because that's different than what you might think of in publicly traded companies. If it was a, an audited publicly traded company, then they have to adhere to the rules of say generally accepted accounting principles, for example, which would be more on an accrual side of things and have very specific rules with regards to that basis. If you needed the financial statements to get a loan from the bank, for example, then the bank might have certain requirements. They would be more likely, you would think, to want an accrual type of system because that's often considered a more you know, accurate type of system oftentimes, but in some cases they might be happy with just your tax return. Also note that as we get into the bookkeeping side of things, we note that the taxes really don't have the full set of books because we don't have the full set of financial statements. We don't have generally the balance sheet and income statement. What we have is just the income statement, the schedule C, which is the performance statement because we're doing an income tax return, which is saying how much we earned over the year and how much expenses we needed to expend in order to earn it. If you do your bookkeeping using software like a QuickBooks or some related software, you will also have a balance sheet, which is something worth keeping track of because the balance sheet is the double entry accounting system helping to make sure that your income statement accounts, income and expenses are reported properly or giving you at least help with that in the proper uh, time period. Okay, so unless you have a required tax year, you adopt a tax year by filing your first income tax return using that tax year. So when you file your first tax return, it becomes quite important to make sure that you double check these things, such as number one, what's your accounting period? Usually it's gonna be a calendar year, but make sure that's what you want. If, you, if there's something other than that that you want, after filing the first tax return, it's gonna be difficult because one of the major accounting principles that will also be reflected in the tax code is consistency. The IRS, one way to manipulate the books, one way to try to manipulate the taxes you would be paying is to manipulate the cutoff dates, meaning try to have income that will be before or after the cutoff date, try to have expenses before or after the cutoff date. One way people could easily manipulate that is if they change their accounting periods. Like, yeah, I have a December year end this year, but next year it's gonna be a January year end and so on and so forth. And you can constantly play games with what period the, the revenue is gonna be recognized in. So obviously the tax code is gonna be set up like a good accounting system, which would say, no, we need consistency. The accounting period has to be the same. Doesn't mean that possibly you can't change it under any circumstances, but it will be more difficult to change after the first year. The same goes for the, the method that you're gonna use that we'll talk more about later. It's gonna be, if you choose a cash-based method, then that's the method that you're going to that the IRS is going to be wanting you to stick with unless there's a reason to change it given the consistency principle. Okay, so a re a required tax year is a tax year required under the Internal Revenue Code or the income tax regulations. So remember, we're not looking at generally accepted accounting principles here and whatnot. We're talking tax code, and that means that you might have in certain instances situations where your bookkeeping is different than the taxes, right? Because you might have your bookkeeping set in accordance with some other regulations, such as generally accepted accounting principles or more of a, of a basis that would be necessary for the bank or external investors. And it might be slightly different with regards to taxes because the tax code is the thing that you're, that you're in compliance with with regards to the tax return. 